Hi and welcome back to my channel Joy Joy. Today we're going to continue making kale with koala. In this video we'll go through sewing on the eyes and the nose as well as sewing the ears and joining the ears, the head and the body back together. I like to start with the ears. So firstly we need to pin each pair of ears together. When you're pinning the ears and any other part of the koala together you need to do it through the sewing line. So you match the corners on each piece of fabric and pin them through so that when you're stitching, you're stitching on the sewing line on both the front piece that you can see and on the reverse side that you won't be able to see. For this reason, it's important that you do lots of pins. The fake fur will shift and move while you are sewing. So you really do need to do a lot more pins than you would normally for normal sewing with non-furry fabric. Now we can sew the ears together. I like to use grey thread that is the same colour as my backing fabric on my fake fur and I use a regular straight stitch. It is important when we're sewing to sew along the stitching line that you drew when you're marking out the pattern pieces. I like to go slow so that I get very accurate stitching along the line. Repeat with the other ear. Once you've sewn each ear, you can turn them through and see how cute they are. Now it's time to move on to adding the nose and the eyes to the face. First we need to fold the pattern piece in half straight through the centre of the nose. We need to do the same thing with the head pattern piece, finding the centre of the head pattern piece by marking the corners with a pin. Then need to mark the centre point for the top and the bottom of the head using a pin and unfold. Taking the folded pattern piece, you will align it with the head piece of material with the pin markers at the top and bottom of the head aligning with the fold line. This allows us to position the nose exactly in the centre of the head. Once that's done, it's simply a matter of pinning the nose onto the head. I like to do at least four pins so that the nose is very securely attached. You don't want it to be shifting when you're sewing it on. Before we move on to sewing on the nose, I like to mark out where the eyes are going to go. You do this by putting the pattern piece on the back of the fabric and putting a pin through the centre of each of the eyes. I then bend the pattern back and using my fabric marker or in my case a sharpie, mark the centre of the eye. This will be where we position the eyes in the next step after we sew on the eyes. Now it's time to firmly attach the nose. We do this with either blanket stitch or zigzag on the sewing machine. In either case it will need to be a small stitch you do along the edge of the black material. You need to make sure that you stitch the entire edge of the black nose material onto the face. So you need to make sure that you go nice and slow and turn as required to go around the curve of the nose. Only remove the pins when you're very close to them so that the fabric doesn't shift on the fake fur. Trim the threads on the front and back making sure that you don't accidentally snip any of the fake fur any of the backs. Now it's time to attach the eyes. Flip over the material so that you can see where you've marked the eyes. As you can see, my fake fur has a woven backing. So by inserting a pin and wiggling, I can slightly increase the distance between the woven fibers. And this allows me just enough space to insert the loop that's on the back of my glass eyes. It can be a little bit fiddly as it is on this first eye, but as you can see with the second eye, which went through the gap very quickly, it's not always that difficult. The glass eyes usually come with thread, and this is to be used for attaching the eyes to your koala because it is much thicker than normal sewing machine thread and is less likely to break. The glass eyes could be a choking hazard, so it's very important that you sew them on very, very firmly. And do not give this toy to children that are likely to put things in their mouths, especially under threads. When you're sewing on the eyes, make sure you go through the fabric on either side of the eye and through the loop many, many times to get them as firm as possible. I also like to tug on the eye from the outside to make sure that it's not gonna come off.
Sew each of the eyes on separately and tie off at the back when you are done. Now that the facial features are done, it's time to attach the ears. The first thing that we need to do is tack the ears onto the head. We do this so that later when we're sewing the head onto the back of the koala, the ears don't shift. Using the start of ear position marker that was on the pattern as a guide, position the ears where they're supposed to be and pin them to the head. Do this for both ears and then either hand tack them onto the head or use a very long straight stitch on your sewing machine to do the same thing. You need to tack halfway between the drawn stitch line and the edge of the fabric so that it's not visible on your final koala. Do this for both ears. Now it's time to add the darts to the head. These darts add a little bit of shape to the koala's face. The dart positions are already noted on the fabric because we marked these when we were tracing the pattern. But we do need to mark the end point for the dart, which is three centimeters from the drawn line. Once this is done, we can go ahead and pin the darts. To do this, we fold the fabric right sides together with the fold finishing at the marked point. Position the pins so that the open end is facing the cut edge. This will allow us to stitch from the cut edge towards the point of the dart. Do this for both of the darts. When we stitch the dart, we do it with a slight curve, which will give a nice shape to the koala's face. Once you have stitched the dart, make sure you turn the fabric over and check the shape of the front of the koala's face. Sometimes you might need to redo the dart to adjust the curvature. In this case, I needed to have a little bit less curve on my dart, so I've been able to re-stitch it slightly inside where I had the first stitch line. If you had too little curve the first time, you will need to unpick in order to do the dart again. Now it's simply a matter of repeating the same process for the other dart. Now that the face is complete and looking super adorable, it's time to add the head to the body back. To make the pinning and therefore the sewing as easy as possible, it is helpful if you mark the center point on each of these pieces. To do this, simply put a pin through the corner points on the body back, folding it in half, and mark the center point on the fold. Whilst we're here, it's helpful to mark the center point at the bottom of the pattern as well. To do this, we use the leg marker points to create the correct fold. We'll do the same thing to mark the centre points on the head, marking both the top and the bottom of the pattern piece. It's now time to pin the head to the body back. As we did with the ears, simply put the pin through the stitch line on one piece and the stitch line on the matching piece. I like to start by pinning at the centre point markers and then at the corners. You then need to pin between those two pins. When you're filling in the pins between these two points, it is very important to do lots of pins because each of these pieces is on a different arc. You need to make sure that each pin goes through the stitch line on the headpiece and then comes out through the stitch line on the body back. Once 
Once you've done all the pins between one corner and the center, repeat for the other side. Please make sure that the ears stay in alignment with both the head and the body back because when we do the sewing of the head to the body back, this is when the ears get properly attached. At this point, they still only tacked into place. Now it's time to sew along the stitch line to connect the head and the body back together using a normal straight stitch. Make sure you check that you have followed the stitch line on both the front and the back of your work before moving on to the next step. Now it's time to put Kale together, which we'll do in part C of this video series. See you next time.